Last time on the Ties That Bind. On their travels to Steamy Springs, our heroes made a stop to relieve themselves, only to discover another victim of the Bleeding God's cult. Forrest, a half-elf barely clinging to life, gives them the description of his vertically challenged attacker as they provide him safe passage to his home in Steamy Springs. Once in the foggy, tourist-filled town, they make some time to relax at the famous Mountaintop Hot Springs Resort and even encounter their familiar friends and their traveling tavern, the Wandering Weasel. The good times couldn't last, however, as they investigated the town for clues on this mysterious assailant. They discovered a half-elf woman pleading for someone to save her husband. She led our heroes up a foggy mountain path, only to find his body. Tracking the killer down the path, they came across an eerie sight. A man dressed in red and black with a horrifying porcelain mask. And at the end of his blade, the halfling they were looking for. Well, hello there. Allow me to introduce myself. There are those around here who call me the Jester of Bordeaux. He stands before you as the fog swirls around in the wind, blowing through this small little mountainous valley that you're in. So how many dead bodies are around him right now? Is it three? Uh, it's just the one for now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's turned away from him, and uh, the halfling has slumped to the ground. Seems to be bleeding out rather quickly. And, yeah, he, as far as you know, he's, he's gone. The jester stands before you, staring blankly. You can't even really make his eyes out through the mask. All you see is a small gleam from within, which you are assuming are his uh, true eyes, and you're not really sure who he's staring at, but as he's staring forward, you can tell that he's he's definitely looking you guys over. Is his weapon drawn? It's still in his hand. It still has some blood at the tip of it. It's dripping down onto the snow. But he doesn't look like he's going to attack us. He's actually giving you a small bow as he's looking up as he uh, introduced himself. And by small, I mean a relatively over-exaggerated stage bow. Is he doing a stage bow with keeping his head up, with eyes on us? Yes, he, yes, he is staring straight ahead at you guys. Well, good to meet you. A pleasure. To whom do I make the acquaintance? Asmo uh, shoot, shoot, shoots him a look real fast. Shoots who a look? I shoot Wolfgang a look real fast of like the, the holy shit be careful this guy looks like the real fucking deal like don't reveal too much Wolfgang looks back and sort of gives a small nod Wolfgang hmm. pleasure to meet you Wolfgang Asmo Asmo, a charming name. Thank you. Your, your reputation Dear. precedes you. Does it now? Oh, please tell me, what have you heard? We've heard rumors of you and of what happened in Bordeaux. Only rumors, though. Hmm. Rumors be what they are. What rumors have you heard, I wonder? Did I consume the children? Or merely kill them. I wonder. I only heard they went missing. Ah. Well. Fancy how word travels. A wisp of fog blows through. And as it covers his body and sweeps away, he's missing. <coughs> Look behind us. I'm going to detect magic. Uh, I'm running in uh, an action immediately. Yep. You hear uh, you hear his voice. You can't tell exactly where it's coming from. But I dare wonder, what is it that brings you to this land of the dead and dying? And, Denir, as you look behind you, there's a rock, and he walks out from behind it. Directly behind you guys now, down the path where you were uh, coming from. <clears throat> Nudge Wolfgang, motion behind. 
Wolfgang, as you turn around with your detect magic, this guy is just glowing. Like, it seems nothing that he's wearing isn't magic. He's covered head to toe in enchanted stuff. Hmm. A good eye. Well, we actually came seeking the one you've just disposed of. Hmm. Fascinating. You were and what talking is to it that I, if I may ask, what is it that you were looking for him for? Murder. Hmm. Well. You were talking okay. to each other like you knew each other. Oh, no. Never met this man in my life. Does pose a bit of a thorn in my side, though. Inside. Go ahead. Inside as well. Eight. Six! Ah, uh, nothing. Like, he's just... He's telling you the truth, but he's very hard to read. Obviously, like, with that mask on, he's got a very stone poker face. But as far as you know, he's telling you the truth. He's never met this man. It's an odd thing to kill someone you've never met. I've heard unless that there's before. A, unless there's a reason. And I'm ever so curious why he had to die. As you said, this man's a killer. Surely he doesn't deserve to live. What does it matter if it's by my hand or by yours? Fair point. But something tells me that's not what really brings you here, is it? Not this simple little man. A trivial effort, judging by your stature. No, you're here for something else, aren't you? Where is where is the body of this of this man laying in relation uh, to us? If you are facing the jester down the path, which you are, uh, you're, if you're facing the jester, which I'm assuming you are, which is back the way you came, he is almost directly behind you at kind of a 45 degree angle, which is where the jester was standing before the fog wisped. Huh. All right. I'm going to slowly backstep. And while keeping my eyes on this jester guy, I'm going to rifle through the this dead man's pockets. All right, he just kind of cocks his head at you left and right as you walk away. Something you're looking for, I wonder. Well, he ain't using it anymore. A gem, perhaps. Why? You in the market to buy? No, no, no. I need not such things. But you're a man of style. Oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I do try to keep up a certain set of accoutrements. Oh, you dress to be noticed. I can respect that. And you dress to hide, it would seem. Uh. I can respect that as well. Another wisp of smoke covers him, and he's gone again. You Still got that ready. All... Still got the ready to action. What is your ready to action? Uh, to uh, to pretty much block for somebody else. Okay. Yep. I turn and I put my uh, I turn my back, making sure that my back is to Asmo. I still right, got the tech magic. Back. I've still got to tech magic on. What does he look like as he's disappearing? Uh, you, I, were you looking at him or were you rifling through I was, his belongings? I was, I was looking at him while I was rifling through his belongings. I was just sort I'm gonna of. Have, I'm going to have your. I'm going to have you roll a perception check for that, just because you're rifling through some dude's stuff. How do you know where you're looking at, etc.? That's true. I, was, I mean, I was more just patting, feeling for the shape of a crystal. But yeah, all right. That's fine. Uh, just... Perception thirteen. Uh, you didn't quite get a glimpse of him as he was leaving. Okay. But when you turn back, uh, there's a subtle glow above you, and he seems to be standing on a rock above your head. Oh, jeez. Find what you were looking for. <clears throat> I 
He's just kind of looking down at you. Did I? <laughs> uh, go ahead and do a investigation check. Seven. Uh, this man doesn't seem to have much of anything on him. You find what looks to be a sword guard on him. Like, you know, like a, a sword handle with a guard on it, but it doesn't have a blade. It's magical, but you don't know exactly what it does or what it is. Just sort of palm it around in my hand and look at it, and then look back up at him. Or all of it. Hmm. You mentioned a gem. He kind of sits down cross-legged on the rock as he looks down at you. Yes, seems most of these fools carry a particular type of gem with them. These fools. Yes. So you, dealt, so you dealt with them before. As I said, they're a particular thorn in my side. This one did not seem to have one on him, however. Hmm. Yeah, we got the feeling of that from one of his other victims. Oh. Seems we're on the same side in this. Hmm. Perhaps. He does like a, he presses his hands to the ground, does like a little handstand as he pushes himself back up and over, hops down, and like kind of like leaps up and over between you, Asmo and Denier. Lands with a bit of a flourish, hands in the air, like you know. He's still got his weapon drawn, right? Oh uh, no, it seems to be sheathed now. Hmm. But I want you to make a perception check as you're looking at this guy. Each yeah, of you. Seventeen. I was, eight. I definitely wanted to make a perception on him. Uh Especially his weapon. Mm hmm Five. Denier, uh, since you're looking specifically at the weapon, you can make it with advantage. So. 22. All right. Uh, Wolfgang and Denier, you both noticed that on his rapier, it just so happens that uh, he seems to have one of these gems in question. Yeah, I noticed that. I was actually going to bring that up in character, but... Yeah. Seems you've seems you've acquired one of these gems as well. Oh yes, an old family heirloom of sorts. Hmm. Tell me, oh. what interest is the are uh, these particular gems of yours? You seem to have a few on you. That's a family heirloom. You've had it for quite a while. And I, I see his ears, right? Yes. Had it for quite a while, elf. Hmm. Surely you must know what they do by now. They seem to have various effects, yes. Both on the mind and the body. He's specifically looking at you now, Denier. Denier finds it fascinating that he would know that he has the gems especially seeing as Denier has the gems inside of the lead case. You do notice that his uh, rapier is actually reacting right now, mm -hmm. despite the fact that they are in that case. Mm -hmm. Like, it seems to be pulsing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same trick we've been using for quite a while. Yes. The question is... And don't mind me asking. Mr. Bard, the man from Bardell. He looks to you, Osmo. Yes. Do you want more of them? Or is what you have just enough? Oh, what I have now suits me just fine, I assure you. And you prefer to have others not have them, then? I don't care what others do. I only care what these fools do with them. And why is that? Because they make my life harder. Really? And what do you do, Jester of Bordeaux? Well, funny you should ask. You see, I'm on a bit of a mission myself, you see. But hey. If you truly want to know, and you're not willing to offer me insight as to why you are here, perhaps we can play a game. Looking kind of oh. folds his arms over his chest, still got Requiem in his hand. 
Mm. Fancy weapon you have there. What kind of game? Well, you could call it a test of sorts. You can call it a contest. Me, I'd just call it a gauge of sorts. What do you consider that? I'm glad you asked. And as he says that, another one steps out from behind the rock. <clears throat> you see, I've been traveling for some time, and, well, it gets rather droll and boring on the road. Another one steps out from behind the rock the other way. Quick question. Uh, are, are these uh, other ones? I'm, I'm in a scene. One sec. Oh, okay, sorry. And you see, it's been a while since I've been able to test my metal. Asmo, as a quick wind breezes behind you, you hear a voice from behind you. And you seem to be more than a capable opponent. Uh, all, let me four, of, all four of them draw their rapiers. Uh, so Lanny, perhaps... you, need to, you need to lower the volume. No one can hear. Okay. And you three seem to be more than capable opponents. So perhaps we can play. At least for a little while. As all four of them draw their rapiers, I need you to roll initiative. Uh, so I have a ready to action. Can I try and knock the one behind me back? You said you were going to block somebody and that never... Damn. Yeah. Damn. Oh, nope, That's wrong fair. turn. That is fair. 23. 12. 23, 12, and Wolfgang? Uh, you also had a question. Uh, I was going to say, are these clones of his equally as magical? Yes. Oh, fun. So I can't tell that they're clones or not, even with the tech magic. Nine, by the way. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. 23, 12, nine. Let me set you guys in a row here. What an interesting character, Nick. Holy shit. All right. Denier, you're the first one to be able to take a swing at this. Denier brings up his staff. He smears iron powder across the tip of it. Saying a couple words, crackles of red electricity begin to emanate from the tip. He slams the staff into the ground and he shouts out, Magic staff, make my Asmo grow! What? And I cast enlarge on Asmo. Shit! <laughs> Ow! Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> so, Asmo now has advantage on strength checks, advantage on uh, strength saves. Uh, he also has a plus of plus one d four damage. He is twice as tall and octuple as heavy. All right. Wow. Damn, Janier. Now he's really getting huge. And now that Asmo is a big boy, it is his turn. Crazy? That's really crazy. But I'll take it. I pull out a giant fire ant and one of my short swords. It's more like a fire beetle now. That's pretty much. His weapons do grow with them, but yes. Yes. Asmo slams down uh, fire. He targets the first one right in front of him, the one who appeared right behind him. Yep. 17. Uh, as you bring it down, he steps to the side. <laughs> just looks back up at you. Also just nods a little bit. Okay, and also takes his short sword and swings to the side. 21. All right, as you swing it to the side, uh, you seem to have him pincered between Fire Ant and the uh, sword that you're swinging at him. He looks to the side. 
brings up his sword to try to block, but he can't block it. Go ahead and roll your damage. Oh, boy. Nine piercing plus and D4. And then add your additional D4. Ooh, like the really special D4. Two, 11. All right. As that sword comes clattering in on him, you see a cloud of, like, you see basically just, like, the steam from Fire Ant raising up as fog swirls around. And he's not there when the fog clears. Ah! That's one! I also just kind of does a pose with both blades. You hear a voice from, like, you hear a voice from on your shoulder. Wonderful. <clears throat> Aswell just looks. Is he on his shoulder? Yeah, he's right next to your face. Oh, and God! As, as you turn, you get stabbed in the cheek if a 21 will hit you, which, yes. A 21 sure does hit you. All right, you take... Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, no. 13 damage. And Yikes! I, and you feel a compression in your gut, and I need you to make a wisdom check. Wisdom save. Oh, no. That's an 18. You feel yourself... <coughs> but you, like, scoff it up. <coughs> he cocks his head. Hmm. And... The fog begins to swirl in around you. Around Asmo? Yeah, just uh, as the fog just kind of swirls, you see him just kind of like looking at you. Hmm. Okay. All right. The other one walks up and just kind of taps you on the shoulder, Denier. Okay. As I'm you turn, you see him shield. like swinging his rapier. To, or as, you, as you turn... The other one that was just below you starts shoving his rapier towards you. Reaction. Shield. Increases my AC to 22. All right. As you make your shield, this rapier doesn't seem to... Like, it seems to just kind of glance off as it slides by you. And the same for the one that poked you, too, actually. Now that you're turning to block these. All right. Wolfgang, it is your turn. Okay, so wait a minute. Um, da, da, da. So these these two that are in my line of sight, I can I can see them with my detect magic on, and they both look they both look identical, right? They all look the same. Well, Wolfgang shouts out, "I think they're all clones." All right, and I'm going to. Oh shit. This is going to hit Denier as well, and I want that. Uh. Alright, I'm going to... Uh, Wolfgang is going to... Walk up uh, in between Asmo and this one clone right here. And yeah, he's for, going to pull for flavor, this one is sitting on Asmo's shoulder right now. But Alright. Uh, I'm going to pull out Requiem, and I'm going to take a shot. Alright. No, not one, baby. Otherwise, you're going to shoot asthma right in the tent. Wow, you 14. You take a shot, and as you do so, this uh, jester on Asmo's shoulder, you see kind of a glint in his eye as he turns towards you, lifts up his rapier, and you hear a ping as he deflects uh, it with his blade. Technically, we're flanking, right? Yes, but that doesn't give you advantage. That just gives you a plus two, I believe. So is a 16 not enough? No. All right. Oh boy. Okay. I believe that's all I had. Right. Yes. All right. Denier, it is your turn. All right. Denier is going to bring out a chip of mica from his pouch, and he is going to cast Shatter. He's going to oh. put it right about here. A 10 foot circle will envelop. Uh, he's going to put it on the other side of the two jesters that's flanking him. So that the ten foot circle will envelop them, but not him or Asmo. Okay. Uh, what save is that? Is that deck save or Constitution? Con save. All right. Your DC is fourteen. Yes. 
Yes. Right, well, one of them fails. The other one succeeds. Okay. Uh, let me see. I... There we go. I'm trying to cast it, but it's not wanting to do it on my character sheet. Oh, there it is. It popped up on the, on the screen. Oh, also, hold on. I forgot to uh, roll something for in between rounds. I have to oh, roll no for weather. Oh, no. Whether the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. Ooh. Okay, we rolled below or we rolled below ten. So uh, the wind seems to die down for a bit, and this fog seems to settle. Your vision is—it's it, hard to make clear what's around you right now. Every okay. attack is going to be made with disadvantage All for right. this round. Oh no! I think this is this is what I, I need to do. Yeah, twelve damage to both of them, or uh, six damage to one, and uh, twelve damage to the other. Thunder damage. All right, you see a big goop of snow just explode everywhere as the fog swirls around. And as it settles, only one silhouette appears to remain or remain by you. All right. That's going to be the end of my turn. Uh, those were supposed to, or were those you were supposed to roll d8s by the way not d6s ah so i was i'm sorry i was thinking of uh it's okay i'll let you reroll damage this time okay yeah i was thinking of uh uh scorching ray Oof. Yeah. then one takes eight the other takes four i lie there are two silhouettes remaining <laughs> ah damn it Oh well. They seem slightly shaken. But still relatively like one of them seems kind of shaken, the other one remains unfazed. Asmo, it is now your turn. As the fog whiffs by, you kind of lose sight of the one on your shoulder. If if I utilize uh fighting spirit, it gives myself an advantage. Would that just balance out the lack of advantage? Can you click that spell or click that ability for me real quick? Absolutely. Bonus action on your turn, you can give yourself advantage on all weapon attack rolls until the end of the current turn. Yes, that would give you that would mean that you're not taking disadvantage. You were just rolling straight. After seeing him deflect that bullet, uh, I reach up with the fire ant and try to stab over my shoulder at the son of a bitch with a twenty-five. That will hit, and that's yeah. fire damage too. Yep, as he looks back. Oh. Nine. It's and nine with an additional, damage. plus an additional one because I'm big. Ten damage altogether. All right. All righty. And if, is he still there? Yep, he's still there. For fighting spirit, would you let me use my bite attack actually work for the same purposes? Because it just said weapon you have attack. A you have a, you have a, well, no. The bite attack is not an offhand weapon. You can use your offhand weapon attack once, though. All right, well, I'll be doing that, and I try and get, hit him with my short sword as well on my shoulder as I lean down. Twelve. Nope. That won't. Well, it's nine, because you're just negating the disadvantage. That's true, right. Blah. Yeah. Uh, through the mist, as you're swinging Fire Ant, you can tell you got a good hit on him. Uh, he does not seem entirely phased by it, though. He seems to be holding out his hand as if, like, to grab Fire Ant. But, I mean, obviously it's too big, but he appears to be stopping it with his hand and moves the blade to the side and blocks your short sword with it. <laughs> what? He shakes his hand as if, ow, that kind of hurt. Mm, shit, okay. That ends my turn. Damn. All right, he does kind of a flip and a flourish off of your back. And rolling with disadvantage. Will a 18 hit you? Let me double check, and that is a big ol' yup. All right. You feel his blade plunge into your calf, and you take eight damage. And I need uh, you to make another wisdom save for me. Real fast. I forgot. Did we get 10 additional hit points when we had the went, went to the hot springs? 
Uh, I, I gave 10... all those to you last time. If you didn't yeah. write it down, that's... Uh... Oh, yeah, no, no, I got, I got it. I just wanted to okay. confirm. Yeah, it's 10 yeah. temporary hit points. Okay, so and... 8 damage. Yeah, you're and taking 8 there's... damage, and I need you to make a wisdom save. 11! You feel that same compulsion in your gut, but this time... <laughs> you can't help it. You just start laughing. My character starts, so I start laughing? Okay. Maniacally. Just, <laughs> like, you got tears in your eyes. You can't breathe. You're laughing so hard. <laughs> With a flourish, he turns towards you, Wolfgang, and bows. Your move. Or, actually, hold on. Uh, Jester. Down here. Starts to circle around you, Denier. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the record, Taki, you are under the effects of Tasha's hideous laughter. You will get a uh, another save on your next round. Oh, man. What does that mean? I can't attack? You are currently just laughing. That's all oh. you can do. And until oh, somebody man. slaps you out of it, you're just convulsing with laughter. Okay. Like, you're on the ground. It's like, I can't breathe! A giant snake has now fallen. He can't get up. Yeah, these guys seem to be circling. You're just kind of, like, walking calmly in a very mirrored fashion, and they both start to stab at you at the same time. All right, I'm going to pop my shield. All right, one misses, and the other one misses as well, as you uh, seem to, like, duck and dive out of the way. Their blades almost seem to intersect with each other. Wolfgang, it is now your turn. All right, Wolfgang... Not wanting to waste bullets on these, what he's pretty sure are just a bunch of clones. The real one isn't even here. He's going to dismiss Requiem and back into his pocket dimension. He's going to circle around, take a couple steps, not not breaking combat with this guy. And be like, fellas, I'm sorry. It's going to hurt a little bit. I promise to heal you afterwards. And I slam my palms into the ground as I cast Arms of Hadar. All right. As you slap your hand into the snow, the snow starts to vibrate a little bit. Uh, click that spell for me real quick. The snow begins to vibrate, and it almost seems to, like, float ethereally off the ground. Asma, you're going to have, uh, well, I mean, you have advantage to save checks, but since you are currently under the effects of this spell and are technically prone... I'm still going to say you do not have advantage on this one. Okay. And it yes, just kind of so negates it. Everybody everybody in combat needs to make a strength saving throw. Yep. 15. That'll work. That Chester makes it. 12. That one does not. Yeah. That one does not. All right. So everyone who didn't make their save takes seven bludgeoning damage. And what is... What is, uh, what is this? What do we need to roll? Yeah, as, as, uh, you need to make a strength, you were just making a safe, uh, strength ah. save versus DC 14. You didn't make it. Damn. Denier made it, though. He was able to struggle his way out as these white tendrils appear to, white milky tendrils appear from beneath the snow. They start slapping around and starting trying to grab at you as they try to bludgeon, start slapping left and right, left and right, just flailing madly. You just, you just see Wolfgang just, like, sort of controlling the tentacles with his movement, just like, snap out of it, snap out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like slapping you across the face, Asimov. <laughs> is Asimov laughing anymore now, or is he snapped out of it? Uh, you get to make another wisdom save, I believe. And okay. everybody who uh, made their save takes half damage. Yeah. So that would be three? Ah, fuck, uh, yeah, seven. We round, we round up here. Uh, so... Or Six. actually, I think it's, I, th I think it's, yeah, we'll round up. So three damage. Uh, oh, you're casting at a higher level. So that's seven. Yeah, Warlock. It'd be four. four. Yeah, it'd be yeah. four then. Okay, yeah, four for rounding up. Okay. And those who didn't make their saves, they can't use their reactions until. Uh, it's okay, I'm still frozen with laughter. Until their next turn. All right, well. As they are slapping around, one of those silhouettes next to you disappears, Denier. Okay. The other one appears to be struggling with the uh, tendril as it's starting to wrap its way up its leg. 
All right, Denier, it is now your turn. Oh, wait, hold on. Rolling for weather. I'm still low. Seems to be no wind right now, so it's still very foggy. You're basically seeing silhouettes of slappy tendrils everywhere. I was going to use a bonus action, actually. Oh, go for it. Yeah, I'm going to use a bonus action to pop uh, two uses of my healing light and heal Asmo. All right, you see heal. a heavenly glow. Go ahead and roll those. Let me see. Yay. It's a D6 plus my warlock level, which is four. Evil 13 hit points. Oh my god, that is actually, that's fucking amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alright, that Asma's is the end of my turn. Asmo's still laughing his ass off. Thank <laughs> you! <laughs> yeah, as My you hear Asmo so cackling, the wind is still dead. Denier, you may make your move. I cast Magic Missile at second level. Two on the one in front of me, one on the one near Wolfgang, and one at Asmo. Okay. <laughs> oh, go ahead and roll hey. the two on the one in front of you. Oh no, it's going to go right up my butt! Seven. <laughs> as these two beams seem to intersect and slap this man who's currently being held by this milky monstrosity... He appears to disappear, and the magic missiles seem to hit each other. Uh, roll the two on the one behind. Oh, wait, no, you're just casting this at second level, right? So roll the one on the dude behind. Okay. Three. Yeah, as he's stepping out of the, uh, or as he's getting away from the tendrils, it cracks him across the face. You can see, like, you can see his head kind of slap to the side. And the one for Asmo. And the one for Asmo. Two damage. Asmo, roll a wisdom save. Seven! Mm. It's too <laughs> fucking funny! <laughs> ah, my ass! Ah. It's your turn. You're still laughing. You're laughing hysterically. Another I need you to save? roll me a wisdom save to try to break yourself out of it. Ten! Oh man, you are just not very wise. No. God damn it. But then it again, we all need it. Let me get rid of these guys here real quick. As he looks back up from getting his face slapped... His eyes no longer appear, like, you can actually see two kind of red glows appear from the mist. You see him point his rap here towards you. Who? Uh, Denier, sorry. Will a 20, uh, will a 24 hit you, Denier? Yes, it will. All right, a red bolt of energy appears to crack through and slam you square in the chest. And before you can react, will a 23 hit you? Yes, it will. A second one appears to be coming right from behind it. You take... 18 damage as these red bolts crack you square in the chest. As the red bolts come in to strike Denier, a shimmering green, uh, bluish green aura appears before him, causing the bolts to fizzle out. Arcane Ward absorbs the damage. But it is heavily just shattering. Yeah, it's, it's, it's severe cracks are in it, but it's still there. Uh, where where does the effects of Arms of Hadar end? Or is it just a one-turn spell? I believe... It, it's just a one-turn spell. It, it prevents reactions uh, for until the afflicted target's next turn. All right, well, he takes a few steps back. Wolfgang, it is your move. Since he took a couple steps back between me and Asmo, don't we get opportunity attacks? Oh, well, go ahead. I Roll your opportunity attacks as he is stepping away, but Asmo is still under the effects yeah. of Tasha's hideous laughter. Plus, he failed his strength save, so he doesn't get this anyway. Yep. All right. Uh, I guess I will 
Yeah, Asmo, you're tied up in a very Yamate situation. Yeah. And it's 12. hysterical. Uh, that'll miss. Fuck. <laughs> you seem to hit the corpse that's off to the side. It seems to sink into something meaty. Uh, fuck you. Fucking corpse. All right, it is now your turn, though. Your All right. <sighs> Pretty sure you aren't real. Don't want to really waste a lot on you. A lot more than I have already. Well, that's quite Wolf rude. Wolfgang puts his hands together, and he fires out a beam of white light. I cast Eldritch Blast. Hmm. Go ahead and roll the hit. Ten. As it fires straight towards this man, he kind of, like, does one of those half-step backs, and poof, you hear it ca cascade off the rocks behind him. Interesting. Oh, Dodgy prick. Asmo, go ahead and give me another whiz save. Yeah! Natural 20! Fuck yeah. Yeah, all these all these tentacles are ticking you, tickling you and slapping you. And it's stop it! And you stab stretch it! yourself up. I run right at him. Activate fighting spirit again. My second time using it. I get advantage on attacks. I swing down the fire ant. Natural 20. 20. Na natural 20. Uh, dis uh, oh, yeah, that's right. You're getting, uh, you're, dis uh, you're doing the uh, fighting spirit. Sorry. Yeah, gotcha. Mess him up. Ah, 11 uh, Oh, wait, no. Remember, there's still fog. Disadvantage. 18. Yeah, 18 will hit, though. So that'll seven, be 7. Oh, they, 7 plus 4. Nope, 7. Uh, the plus 4 is for uh, the uh, crit. Being, oh, no, plus 4 for being big as well, though. I mean, the, adding plus one the 1d4. Damage. Gotcha. So you do yeah, 8, one, one, eight, eight, eight damage total. 8 damage. And, and you're the, using fire? Yeah, I'm using, I'm using... I'm just going for regular knife damage. I'm not even thinking about fire right now. Okay. And Asmo swings his short sword at the same time, trying to cut him in half. 23. That'll hit. Nine. And plus yeah, he wasn't expecting you to burst up like that. He's looking over side, huh? And you come slamming him in the side with this dagger and shoving him back with this sword. 13 total damage. Rules of nature. Eight damage. Rolling that down. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry, did, near, did I accidentally skip your turn? Uh, I, I went defensive. Uh, Asmo saved, I think Asmo saved and you gave him an action for, uh, being able, for making a nat 20 for... Uh, uh, no, I I, that, I I was actually going to Asmo's turn. I think I accidentally uh, skipped your turn. You go. You, it's your turn. Uh, is there just that dude, or is the one behind me? Just the one. It's the only one. The only one you see on the map is the one that's there. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move over here in the cover, and I'm going to shoot a firebolt at him. All right. Since Asmo is still getting up, he wouldn't be there in character yet. We'll yeah, we'll play it like that. Meanwhile, at the same time, sixteen. As the fire goes towards him, he kind of holds out his hand. The fire dissipates as it reaches him, and that's why Asmo smashes into him. Yeah, that's when Asmo caught him off guard. adding some stuff into my doodly-doos. Right, Asmo, after you finish, like, slamming this dude, you pull your blades back. He's still kind of standing there. He's surprised, but does not seem all that damaged. And he looks over to you, kind of shakes his finger, points at you. At who? At you. Oh, what, Asmo? And flames begin to encircle you. And you need to make a deck save. Oh, shit. Natural 20. Oh, shit. Ooh, you make it out. As you, get... as you roll back out of these flames, they seem to rise up. 
and you only take six fire damage as you roll out of it. How far back do I move? Oh, I'm just saying that you kind of made an adjustment. Don't It doesn't actually okay. affect your space on the board. <sighs> Try uh, harder. Uh, Very well. Oh, sh... <laughs> as he says that, you feel a little uneasy as he raises his sword up. And you lose track of him for a sec. Disadvantage. Right, that's a good one. That is also good. Will a 19 hit you? Yes, it will. Sure will. I'm just trying to check with all this stuff. All right. Wrong dice. Oh, I actually... Uh... Oh, there we go. Now I remember. I forgot about fighting spear giving me additional hit po- uh, additional temporary hit points, but okay. Yeah, no worries. You can add those as you see fit. Yeah. Uh, you take ten damage as you feel a sharp pain in your gut. You don't need to make a wisdom save this time, though. Uh, good. That's good. Take a bite all my hit po- all my ten hit points. <laughs> no one of the problems of being that big. Wolfgang, it is your turn. Hmm. All right. Wolfgang is going to... He's going to move up 20 feet to the... uh, I guess to his right. I'm I'm going to tip my hat down over my eyes and I'm going to raise my finger and point at him as I cast... True strike. His eyes glint as he, like, seems to look over towards you. All right, time for roll for weather. Oh, what a great time for this. And as your eyes lock, the wind seems to blow, and you get a faint glimpse of his face as you get a, as he gets a glimpse of yours pointing at him. Both of your hat brims seem to be shading your eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denier, it is your move. Firebolt. Go ahead and roll it. Uh, no disadvantage this time. Twelve. Yeah, you seem to fire it off, and he looks back towards you and just kind of whacks it away with his blade, which he pulls out of Asmo's gut. <laughs> Asmo, as he pulls out the sword, it is now your turn. Unless you want to make a move, Denier. No, I'm I'm staying in cover. All right. Alrighty. Uh I uh Asmo feeling the blood dripping from him. Asmo decides to activate action surge. All right, go ahead and click that. Action Surge. You can take one additional action on top of your regular action and possible bonus action. I can only do this once per rest. All right. Go so for it. You, as get three, you get three attacks or three actions, whichever you... I'm going to do three attacks. Two actions, yeah. Okay. I'm going to do... Yeah, Asma's going to go swing down with a fire at 24. That'll hit. Six plus... Uh, fire ant piercing or fire? Fire, six plus one, so right. seven. Asmo swings with the short sword as well. 22. That'll hit. Six plus three, nine. And the last one, Asmo goes for a bite because he's twice the size of him. All right, Asmo. Try to vor this man. Go for your bite. Asmo goes for a big ass bite. Ah! 17. You rear your neck back and start to throw down your face. But when you get there, he seems to have vanished almost, and you bam hit your face on the ground and bite into some snow. The vanishing is a bit of flavor, but a, a, a Wolfgang, you saw this. A wisp of fog seemed to pick up, and when it's gone, he's no longer there.
and he appears to reappear back down this way. Yeah. Hmm. Cute. He grabs a small he grabs a small black ball out of his pocket. Perhaps you would like to get a taste of what it is you're going after. He throws the ball in between you and Wolfgang Asmo. And it expands immediately into this <clears throat> massive black sphere. And all around you, you just hear... <clears throat> and I need you guys... Oh, there is no save for this part. You're just in pitch blackness where you are. All of us? <clears throat> uh, you, Wolfgang, and... Uh, you and Wolfgang, anyway. In... Hold on. Let me draw no this out dude. for you. Here we go. Here we go. And basically this space here, it's just this inky blackness denier you see as it surrounds them. That's a new one. And Wolfgang, as, as this all picks up around you, you feel uncomfortable, but incredibly cold so cold that it seems to bite at the back of your neck and your fingers and though your jacket your new equipment seems to resist this a bit meaning you're taking half damage oh boy. Um, the half damage that you do take is uh, four damage total okay it would have been eight Your move, Wolfgang. All right. Is there... I saw where he was before he threw this, and I do yes. have true sight on him. Is there any way I could try to run out of this fog? Yes. It seems to be like this area seems to be like you're walking through a swamp right now. You're not sure what it is, but it's very hard to move your legs. You are moving with uh, through difficult terrain as you try to travel. Difficult terrain, but I can see? You cannot see through it. It is just pitch black in here. All right, let me see if, is there a way I could get, if I move, if I move right here, just directly to the, directly to the right, would I have a line of sight of him then? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do that then. So you drag yourself out of this inky blackness to be hit in the face with this cold gust of air, fresh air. And he's staring at you. I look back over at him. Dead eyes ready. And I fling my arm forward and I cast Guiding Bolt. Natural 20. <laughs> oh, Ooh, the there it goes again. Go for it, man. This massive bolt of energy flies forth from your hand, striking him, dealing... Rum roll, please! Oh my god. Oh! Damn! What is that? 30. That's 6. That's <laughs> 39 damage? That's 32 plus 6 damage. That's 38 damage. That's a lot of damage! Woo! Blam! As he just gets blasted. You see a little blood trickle out of his mask. Well. He wipes it with his glove. Into a sort of lipstick pattern around the porcelain mask. Oh, fuck. My, my. Very interesting indeed. He coughs up a bit more blood. Denier, it is your move. All right. I'm going to... Oh, what's Wait, up? By, by the way, Guiding Bolt, second defect. 
all attacks against or the first attack against him has advantage this turn. All right. I'm going to go ahead and see in the attack. I suspect that Asmo is probably going to be the best to deal with this dish out the most. You know what? What the hell? I burn my final spell and I cast Chromatic Orb. Thunder damage. 25. All right, that'll hit him as the orb. Uh, do you need line of sight on him when you're doing this? Uh, says one action within 90 feet. I hurl it at him. All right, so I you assume... hurl it over the rock. Kobe! Uh, you hurl you hurl a four-inch diameter sphere at in, uh, of energy at a creature that you can see within range. Uh, assume... you no, know, you do not have line of sight on him, so you'd have to make an adjustment first. Okay, then I can easily come over here, make the adjustment, bam. And then I can pop back into cover. <laughs> okay. So you roll out, whoop, throw this snowball of thunder at him, and it cracks him across the face. You can actually see a small, like, fissure sort of form in the side of his mask. Fastball special. And I pop back into cover. Mm-hmm. Asmo, the inky blackness surrounds you. I can't see anything. And it's really freaking cold, and all you hear around you is this sloshing. And it's so cold, your jacket seems to absorb some of it, but you take five cold damage. Okay. Question. I'm going to ask you a question, Nick. Go for it. I have, I have a scroll of light in my inventory. Can I grab it even though I can't see anything? Yeah, you can grab stuff off your person. I reach for the scroll of light. And I activate it. Okay. As you activate light, from all around you, you can just see a pool of blood. (gasps) You can't see what's Uh. making this slurping noise. But you are standing, like, ankle deep, even though of your size, in this pool of blood. (laughs) It's just nothing but blood as far as I can see, pretty much. It almost looks like it stretches on for eternity. And you just hear... (laughs) Should I do a perception to see what I, what, what's making that right now, or is that even possible? You're not sure if it's possible, but you can try if you want. 20. Modified. In the far distance, you think you see... It's a small shape. Maybe about the size of a normal person, but small to you right now. Seems to have those horns on its head, very similar to the Claratrix, but these seem to be made of flesh. And its face does not seem to have eyeballs, just pure white, but its mouth, it seems to stretch out like stringy pizza with flesh around it, and there's these hideous fangs on the inside. Its is fingers it dr- long, gnarled, and clawed. Is it drinking the blood? It seems to be reaching its hands down and doing it, but you're hearing this sound all around you, despite seeing the one doing it. So you're assuming that there might be more of these. Avno backs up as fast as he can. All right, this is difficult terrain, so each square counts as two, or counts as... 10 feet of your movement. Doesn't your movement get increased with uh, enlarged form? I, I don't think that was part of the uh, No, that's not spell. part of it. Hmm. Uh, I can move right out of it, though. Yeah. yeah! And, I, and as you slide out, you begin to feel something caress your leg, but when you step back out, freaked out, you're back out on the mountain again, and you can still hear the slurping from inside. And you could almost see a clawed hand reaching out for you as it goes back in. Osmo's shaking. He shook. Asmo shook. Um, I have one more. I, I've walked. I activated the thing of light. I, is that use up my turn then? Yeah. Asmo's sh- shooken. Asmo's quite shook. Asmo's shook as fuck. Ah! Ah! <laughs> 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 Ooh, 
Well, gentlemen, this has been fun. And, uh, Denier, was it? I would be yes. careful how you throw around sound like that. We're in a very fragile environment. He gives a bow. And you start to see the snow shake around him. And as he looks up, until we meet again, you hear a massive exploding pop as he vanishes from sight. And you hear this rumbling around you. Feline agility, I book it as hard as I can. Well, Back I'm going to need you all to make deck saves real quick because there's snow tumbling down at you. I have an advantage on that, right? Uh, on dexterity? I don't think so. Uh, I had an advantage on strength right now. What was the other one? Strength saves and strength checks. I got a nine oh. on my deck save. All right. As you try to turn to run, some snow starts to pile up on you. Uh, 22. As well, I... you seem to be able to roll out of the snow, and the fact that you're so big means you're kind of above it, so you're just kind of pushing yourself up and over it. Wolfgang, go ahead and make the save as well. Uh, can I pop Radiant Soul and just fly out of the way? Uh, it's coming down from on top of you, so it'll be kind of hard to fly out of the way, but I'd give you advantage if you wanted to do that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and pop Radiant Soul. My. All right. These Bada translucent bing. wings seem to sprout from his back. Denier, you're not noticing because you're buried like over your head in snow. At least I'm between two rocks. Uh, that'll hopefully give me some cover. Denier! All right, go ahead and roll your deck save real quick. Uh, 14. That'll make it. Denier, you take 12 cold damage as it... Uh, or, or, sorry, uh, you take 6 cold damage and... Four bludgeoning damage as the snow rains down on you. Uh, the the six was the twelve halved. For your cloak. Okay. And Asmo, and... you kind of pile yourself up on the snow. Ha! 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 And Wolfgang, you just kind of like fly out of the way and land on top of this newly formed layer of snow. Yeah, I, I start digging Denier out of the snow. Uh, 20 on my uh, concentration check in order to keep Asmo large. Yeah, you make it. And peeking out from above the snow, this orb, like this black, sticky dome of energy still seems to be there. And it begins to shrink. And eventually it kind of dissipates. But yeah, go ahead and head over and you can... Do uh, each of you can do a survival check to dig Denier out? Osmo's actually struggling to get over there. Osmo's really shooken up, so Osmo's that's a nineteen. Just... All right, Wolfgang, you're digging through, and your angelic radiance is kind of helping you to get through this snow. And as you reach down, you can see uh, Denier's hand kind of struggling to get out there. The two yeah, of you he... can give me athletics checks to pull him out. All right, uh, <laughs> Denier's on. trying to use the rock. Uh, his claws into the rock, as well as uh, Wolfgang to get out. All right. With your survival check, you're kind of unable to get your arm over to the rock or where you thought the rock was. It's just so mm -hmm. much snow in the way. But you can get your hand to Wolfgang. Uh, you said acrobatics or athletics? Athletics. Both of you. All right. 14. Come on. Be assisted. Come on, Denier. You're able to get him up to a breathing position. You can kind of get him half up out of the hole. And with the rest of your turn, you can kind of just, like, get yourself out of there. It's it's a struggle, but you make it, and it's got snow collapsing around you. Meanwhile, Asmo's just kind of sitting over in the corner, kind of hands beside his face, just rubbing his temples. Uh, I think I'm okay at this point. Go check on him. He doesn't look too good. Yeah, I'm going to go fly over here like a, like an archangel. Yeah, Asmo, uh, Wolfgang's just kind of hovering in front of your face here. I'm gonna, gonna pop myself down on his shoulder. I'll be the angel on his shoulder. No, I'm not that big. <laughs> you are, actually. <laughs> You're ten feet tall. At least. Osmo vomits. <laughs> uh, 
all that beer you drank is just kind of staining the uh, snow. <clears throat> also, there's a little bit of blood in there from the stabbings. <clears throat> <laughs> Osmo's shaking, too. That's rough, buddy. All right. <sighs> Is he gone? Uh... You look around, Asmo. You don't seem to see him anywhere. I think... <sighs> A sample of what we're going after. <laughs> Jesus Christ. God. Oh, the gods. Where are we going? Guys, where are we going? What the fuck are we doing? And where are we going? Not so loud, you'll cause another avalanche. Don't talk to me. I also just, it's not even responding. Go ahead and pop another healing light on him. You feel a soothing, calming energy wash over you as you regain another six hit points and your wounds seem to dissipate. Your stomach still sort of aches from all that laughing you did. <sighs> Thank you. Aswell just looks over at, at you, Aswell just looks over at him as he leaves and just nods a little bit and just goes back to like just sitting there kind of like low key trying not to rock back and forth. Come down the mountain and meet us when you're ready. <laughs> Aswell just gets up himself and just move, moves. Come on. What was in there? I saw what was in there, right? I was inside it. No. Uh, well, you didn't. You didn't have a light spell to help you. Asmo was the one that pulled that out. You didn't see a... shit. You just felt the thick, inky mess around you. And like Asmo, dark... as you left, there was no blood prints on your shoes or anything. Same with you, Wolfgang. Although you were, like, waist deep in it. Or knee deep, I should say. It was like a darkness spell, but worse. <sighs> Asmo was just sitting there. As was behind them at the back of the party, just nodding. Oh, yeah. Much worse. Much, much worse. Mm. You're more spooked than usual. You know something I don't? Asa just looks at him. And you, Asa makes a look of, please don't ask me right now. <laughs> like, just like... <sighs> Alright, so that's sort of... I, I sort of float down the, the the path and I wander back into the cave we left that lady in. Yeah, she's still there, just kind of... Oh, uh, I do... Uh, I, I forgot. To, uh, I, I, I also want to bring that body with us. Alright, uh, I'll let you make a survival check because it got buried. Nine. You're not sure where it ended up. If anybody else would like to assist him in his efforts of finding it, yeah, I'll give him a, I'll give him a hand. Eleven. Yeah, but natural twenty. Oh, okay. Asmo, <laughs> like as as he's saying, like, no, where's that corpse, Asmo? You just reach your giant hand down there and just lift him up, like hold, like he's just in your fist. Let's go. You just punch him in the snow. Whoop, whoop. We're leaving. We're leaving. As well just stomp, stoom, stoom as us as the giant snake walks down the path. How you long does this even last for, God? That's a good question, actually. <laughs> Denier, any way you could drop that spell and we'll cause another avalanche for you go stomping around like that? It lasts for a minute, so by the time, uh, it, 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 yeah, by the time you guys are leaving, like after you lift him up, you like Super Mario. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> As no, dun, 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 walks. So, <laughs> the guy got a from... lot heavier as you're holding him. What the heck? Oh no, he's growing. Been holding on to that one for a little while. All right, as you make your way down the path, I'm going to say that you just kind of 
drag this guy behind you in the snow or carry him however you would. Yeah, we don't give a he's, fuck. He's not heavy. He's like 85 pounds, which is, you know, heavy for carrying, but you can drag him. He's already in a cloak that you can just kind of tug along with you. All right, we... I head back into that cave and I, I, I check on that lady. She's still just kind of sitting there blankly. She seems to be in shock. Her uh, cheeks have tears frozen to the side of them. And she's just breathing and not moving. If you reach out and touch her shoulder, she'd look to the side with this same blank expression. Denier moves over, crouches down next to her. He gives her a little bit of a smile. For what it's worth, your husband's been given justice. He motions to the corpse behind him. But if you're willing, let's get you and him back to town. We don't want to leave you out here. She just kind of blankly nods. And I'll offer my hand to help her up. She accepts your help. How do you plan on getting uh, these two corpses down the side of the mountain? The path you traveled wasn't incredibly difficult, but it was hard enough that you might need to make checks if you're trying to carry two bodies. We'll probably just focus on carrying the one, and then the halfling's body will just kick down the slopes, I suppose. All right, just shove it. Just shove it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just, just yeet that shit all the way downtown. Um, yeah, I'd say loot, loot the uh, the halfling's body, and I don't know, just either take them in. Maybe we could uh, sell the corpse off to uh, the bar owner, or maybe uh, like. Uh, Denier and Wolfgang could probably take the halfling corpse, and Asma could take uh, take the husband's corpse. All right. Um, if you want to loot his body before you start hurling him about, go ahead and give me uh, survival checks on him or investigation checks, as you see. Uh, I'm looking for like a spell book or like anything magical specifically if that would uh, focus what I need to look at. All right, Wolfgang, you still have that. Uh... Magic that, handle. Yeah, I have the sword handle that's stowed away in my bag. Denier, as you're poking around his pockets, you do find a journal, a book Ooh. of sorts. It seems to be bound in leather. Seems a bit wet and weathered. I'll press a digitation to dry it off before uh, yeah, putting can, it with my you bag. You can dry it off of all the snow that it was buried in, but it still yeah. seems kind of damaged throughout time and travel. Yeah. Doesn't seem very well kept. Hopefully I'll see what I can get from it. Yeah, you pocket that. All right. You guys begin to make your way down the mountain. Uh, give me a survival check, each of you, just to see if you can remember your way down. Seven. Three. And Asmo? Uh, Asmo will, of course. Asmo is, like, just super out of it, but, uh, four. <laughs> what about the woman? She ran all the way to town. Uh, yeah, but... No, I'll, I'll give her a chance at it, but she's gonna do it at disadvantage. Nah, she's no help. You guys, like... It starts to get really dark, like really, really dark, and you realize that at this rate, you have no idea where you're going and you're going to have to make camp somewhere. The fog seems to be swirling in very thick, and while it's slightly warm, it's not warm enough to, you know, stay warm for the night. Any kind of caves or anything like that nearby? Give me another survival check, see if you can find something. Seven. 
and a 14. All right, Wolfgang? 16. Asmo, between you and Wolfgang, you spot just a dark opening. It looks to be a cave of some sort. You're not sure how deep it goes, but you kind of gesture over to it. Mm. You get everybody inside, the two corpses. <clears throat> Seems relatively cramped, but that might be okay. Yeah. Do you guys want to take shifts as you do some rests? Osmo yeah, I, yeah. Osmo will take first shift. Before Denier even tries to go to sleep, he makes sure that the uh, the front is alarmed with a 20-foot area, uh, specifically allowing the three of them in and out with an audible alarm. Um, how is it uh, very deep back? Or no? Uh, it seems it seems very narrow, mm -hmm. and it, it just kind of kind of comes to an end to a point where you just can't slip through it anymore. It's going to be very uncomfortable rest, but it's a place to kind of ride out this night at the very least. I'll and put at least one there shelter. as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably. Like, there's enough room to, if you, like, kind of scrunch up on the ground, you can sleep kind of knee to chest, back to cave. Because mm -hmm. there's not enough room in there lengthwise for everybody to sleep head to foot. Okay. Asmo takes the first shift, though. All right, Asmo, give me a perception check as your first shift rolls around. Seven. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Sometimes the fog whisks by. You get the whistles, whistle of the wind through the cavernous mountain pass. Uh, who's taking second shift? You decide that as you wake them up. I kick open, uh, I kick Wolfgang's foot. All right, Wolfgang, you feel kind of a shove and you're jostled awake by Asmo after you mm -hmm. get about two or three hours of sleep. In your shift, I need to go to sleep. Or try to, at least. Good luck. I don't need it. Asmo just slithers into, like, a snake. <laughs> I guess it, Asmo finds enough space for himself to sleep, because snakes can sleep on rocks. Yeah, you get yourself into a position where you, you're kind of nestled between people and you're kind of warm, but it's still cramped enough that you're still kind of uncomfortable. It takes you a little bit to nod off. Asmo goes to sleep shaking a little bit. Still Wolfgang, freaked out. Give me, yeah. Wolfgang, give me a perception check as you're keeping your eyes out. Okie dokie. Ten. Yeah, nothing seems to cross your path throughout the night. You hear the howl of a wolf in the distance. You're kind of surprised that there are that many carnivores that can still exist out here. Mm. But Probably other than that, your night seems to go by with relative ease, and about three or four hours later, you decide to wake Denier. Denier. Mm. Yeah. Air shift. All right. Denier gets up. He takes the extra blanket that he had with him. And he makes sure to wrap it around Asmo nice and tight. Um, you bundle him up. Then he's a bundle. Looks over, sets up, uh, sets up for his watch. Oh, you're kind of cutting in that there. Spell. Sorry, you're cutting, you, you, sorry, dude, you're cutting in and out there. Right? Can you mind uh, dropping and rejoining? Oh, wow, I can't hear anybody. Hello? So, Lenny? Hello! There Hello. we go, now I can hear you guys. Hello! After he up uh, Asmo, he's going to move to the opening of the cave. He's going to use his uh, arcane recovery to recover a second level spell slot. And he, as he keeps watch, he's going to keep a small bag in his hand 
the bag is opened. Okay. And he's going to keep watch. All right, give me a perception check. Okay. Nine. Yeah, nothing seems to be catching your catching your glance. You hear another howl out there, same kind that Wolfgang heard, but obviously you weren't there for that one. Mm -hmm. You know there are wolves in these mountains. When he hears the howl, he's going to grip the, the small bag a little bit tighter. And he holds an action. All right. A bit of light begins to be shed as you start to see the tips of the mountain that you're looking out at start to glow a little. First it's pink. Then it starts to radiate a bit brighter to a nice orange. You believe the sun's starting to come up. Mm -hmm. So that might be about the time to wake everybody up. All right. So he'll return and he'll uh, gently nestle Wolfgang a little bit. And mm. then he will gently nestle uh, Asmo a little bit. And then he will gently uh, nestle Russell uh, Asmo again because he suspects that Asmo is not going to get want to get up. And in about five more minutes, he's going to come and do it again. Eventually, you guys all get up, and you're not sure how well the woman slept, but she still seems to be in that same sort of shocked state. Her eyes, seem to well, her eyes seem to well with tears as she uh, looks out at the open mouth towards the corpse of her husband. She looks away. Let's get going. Out of this fucking cave. With the light starting to pierce through the sky, it begins to get a little easier for you to navigate. And you find your way down the mountain. You begin Yay. to recognize landmarks. And you make your way back into misty or uh, steamy springs. You don't mind me. Town seems to be bustling as there's actually daylight out about now but a few people take notice as you walk in with uh two corpses and a <laughs> very shook woman and a guard uh, man in a uniform will walk up to you seems to be uh blue and black the uniform ah, the police what's all this about Point at the half. Uh, point at the small one, or I, I point. I point at the uh, the husband. This man was murdered. I point at the small one. This man's the killer. I point at the wife, and she's traumatized. All right. Well, Miss, do you have some place that you can go? Some family. She kind of like looks blankly and nods. All right. Well, I'll I'll be happy to take you there for you. Uh, you lot, if you could uh, take this over to, well, if you could take this to the guard posts, I'd be very, uh, I'm sure they'd like to talk to you. And he kind of points down the street towards a very official looking building. Seems to be close to town center, not too far off from the spa. Seems to be yeah. across the street from where the uh, carts are parked. Got like okay. a wagon or a wheelbarrow we can put these guys in, or just this one. I imagine the wife will want her uh, husband. I imagine you're right. Tell you what, I'll see if I can get. I'll, I'll see what I can get for you. And he calls over a couple of other guys, and they run off, and they come back, and they kind of bring like a little hand cart, something that you would use for you know just transporting. Just a bundle of things to, like, it's not it's not like a wheelbarrow, but kind of like a thing that you'd use to set up, like, a merchant cart. Something that you'd bring merchandise with with that. All right. It's like a well, little load, flat pallet. I load the merchandise into the cart. Ooh. All right. You set each of them kind of head to toe, and the two guards that came over help you usher it over to the post. 
You're greeted there by a, like, inside when you step in. This place is made of dark wood. There's a lot of dark iron in there. And sitting in a very shaded area, a man with black hair and very, fairly pale skin looks up at you. Hmm, what's all this about that I've heard? Well, it's just that you said this, uh, is the wife with us? Uh, no, she was ushered back to her home with, uh, by the other guard that you met. A woman came to us at the local tavern, said that, uh, her husband was being attacked. Yes, yeah, time... I recall quite a commotion last night, but by the time my men arrived on the scene, uh, it seems they had already left. I assume you're to blame for that. Yeah, but, uh... We left before your guards arrived, and even we were too late. Man was murdered a while before we got there. And this other one, the halfling. The murderer. And you saw fit to do this justice yourself, under whose authority? Well, here's the thing. We didn't kill him. We found his body on top of the mountain. Hmm. He appears to have a stab wound from a narrow blade. He looks over to you, Asmo. And you appear to be carrying a narrow blade. I think if you'll check, they won't fit. He's pointing at the rapier at your side. Yeah, I see. Is that one? I have a right. right one of my swords is a rapier. Yeah, you picked one up. Oh, shit. Asmo uh, just places it. He looks at the, He looks at it. Looks at the hole. Thin as a needle. Care to explain? And he hands you back your sword. Didn't use it. Hmm. Unlikely story. Wolfgang, I want you to roll a perception check on this man. Uh, -do -do. Perception check. Hoi! Ten. All right, nothing seems to catch you, but there's something odd about this man. Mm. Can I roll a perception check on this guy? This guy's being weird. Targeting With disadvantage, me. you're not sure what to be looking for here. Six. Yeah. Stan this man's definitely a bit aggressive about this. Well, either way... I'm looking here at a, a dead suspect and three men who happen to find them. The what wife were you able to learn from him. The wife will corroborate that we found the husband's body together. However, she didn't come with us to confront the killer. She How convenient. Was reasonably upset at seeing her husband dead before her eyes. I'm quite sure. Thing is, I'm not sure you'll believe us even if we do tell you. And why is that? It's a little while. You ever heard of the Jester of Bordeaux? The folk tale. Evidently. Are you telling me this painted clown walked out and murdered this man just before you got there? See? And I you just you so happened to survive this killer of hundreds. See? I told you you wouldn't believe me. But that's Asma what happened. Pulls, Asma pulls up his shirt. And just have the, the, the stab wound in his stomach. Still healing over. How about that, huh? And Aswell just sits down again. <laughs> this man, was he armed? Yes. With what? With a rapier. Inlaid with a glowing pink jewel. Where is said weapon? That one did not have it. Still on him. 
he looks down at the halfling. Kind of, like, waves his hand. Where? Are you talking about the one that the halfling was stabbed with, or the one that... As as far as I'm concerned, there are only four people involved in this other than the other dead gentlemen. You three, and this one. This is what I would like to get to the bottom of. By the way, what was the name of the guy we saved yesterday, uh, the day before? His Four, name was Forrest. If you need an additional person to corroborate that this man is the killer, or at least that he attempted to kill someone we met along the way, his name is Forrest. I am not questioning that this man is a murderer. We have been searching for someone of his description. What I am questioning is that you have dealt out vigilante justice in my jurisdiction. If you believe this, then find a priest. The people of this city seem to be capable enough with necromancy. Spe a spell to speak with the dead would should be easy enough to come up with. Or perhaps a priest that can make sure that no lies can be spoken in the area. Well, that is something that we intend to do, but right now I wish to get the story from you. First of all, what are your names? Wolfgang, you can make another uh, perception check on this man. Oh, yeah. Natural 20. This man's a vampire. <laughs> he kind of, he 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 like, snarls a little bit and picks his, like, kind of scratches some food out between his uh, fang and one of his uh, other teeth as he pulls out a book. Names. Denier. Denier. Asmo. Asmo. Wolfgang Connolly. He pauses for a moment as he's writing down the first name. Get him! Don't you shut him. <laughs> and I look him dead in the eyes as I say that. A monster hunter. You know, it's not the first time that I've run afoul of you, Connollys. Always trying to dispatch your own justice. This is a land of laws. I've been truthful to everything I've said. He finishes writing out your name. I wasn't aware of a third Connell in these lands. How long have you been here? Not long. We what's just your, arrived. What's your business? Our own. That's not good enough. Unless you want to see the inside of a cell for a very long time. Trust me, I can wait. Trying to, trying to find this lady's name. In my notes. Ah, uh, this will be faster. Uh, what's what's the silver dragon lady's name? Uh, that would be Tia. Tia. We are on a mission from the capital city by the order of the silver lady Tia. I'm listening. We were sent north to investigate strange happenings in the area, and so far, that's all we've come across is strange happenings. So you're trying to tell me that in good faith, the dragons have sent emissaries who by all accounts, do not seem to be wearing their colors. On a goodwill mission into our lands without informing anyone. That's right. To a normal individual, this might sound like an act of war. 
You're going to need to explain yourself in great detail. Are you sure you want to know? It's a little complicated. Complicated is my job. Perhaps above the uh, above the pay grade of a town guard. I don't know. But I'll tell you. But this town is the first step, the first measure of security on the way to the capital. Are we being listened to? You're being listened to. And you better be able to prove it. Is there a way we can talk privately? He looks over to a couple of the guards that are just kind of standing around on guard. I trust these men with my life. You're not. Very Wait, well. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Out of character. He's a vampire! <laughs> they still have lives. Un lives. <laughs> they have very, very exist. long lives. I don't. My God, I can't say anything because I don't want to metagame, but God damn it. Very well. We can talk in private. I can come alone if that is more comfortable for you, even. No offense, Mr. Connolly, but people of my ilk and. People like you don't tend to get along alone. Hand over your weapons. I pull. Sorry, I, I lost you there. Oh, I, I pull out Requiem and I set it down on the table. In front of them. And your comrades. Spell books. I put down the staff. Blades. And the dagger. Asmo starts doing that whole daggers off out of everywhere. Tink, tink, tink. tink, tink. One out of the boot, one off your back, <laughs> two out of your vest. And he pulls out the two swords over his shoulder, <laughs> puts them down, pulls out each of the throwing daggers. Tink, 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 tink. He motions for a guard. He motions for a guard to come over and pat you down. Have you guys dropped all of your weapons? Yeah. Those are the. All right. Let me see. Oh, I also, I, I do have a knife, but I, I just hand that over. I hand over all my weapons. All right, you hand over your knife. Uh, when the guard is patting you down, he does find the knife handle that you have on you. A what? Uh, Wolfgang found a, a magical knife handle on the halfling. Ah, forgot about that. This was his... You gesture towards the uh, halfling, I'm guessing? Yeah, yeah. This is the stiffs. Take it into evidence. Yeah, they take that and they wheel out the bodies. He motions for you uh, to come up some stairs. <clears throat> and he leads you into an office. He sits behind a desk, shoves a pile of paper out of the way. Sits down in a nice leather chair. And there are a couple of smaller chairs in the room that you guys can make your way to. Making your way downtown. Okay. Now. Explain to me how this is not an act of war. You can explain in brass tacks or you can explain it in character. Ooh, do it in character. Go for it. Let's have fun well. with it. Where to start? Are you aware of the pink crystals, Mr. Ferratu? <laughs> uh, yes, of course. <clears throat> Blackthorn. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I see your ultimate references, Lanny. Victor Blackthorn. <laughs> Mr. Dark! No, um... Has, has, does Asma and Denier don't know he's a vampire yet, right? I don't believe Denier it's doesn't. been stated out loud yet. 
Okay. <laughs> well, the crystals, they contain vast amounts of power. There have been rumblings around of individuals going mad. I believe this man that you found may have been connected. I would have loved to have asked him some questions. So in fact, would we. I believe there were some rumblings that further south in cold reach. News has passed of horrific killings down that way. Yep. Yep. Ain't that the truth? We would know we were there for it. We did the investigation. Yes, we did. I did hear that some Connollys were involved. One of them died. Looks at you in the eyes. It might not mean much, but my condolences. Thank you. So these now, crystals are what brought you to our land. From what we've heard, these crystals originated up north, where there is a large stockpile of them. They've since made their way near to the capital. And uh, we are investigating why that is and how they're getting out. It's why we were hired, because we're a neutral party. More or less. I see. Well, this is all still very difficult to come to terms with. Do you have something of proof that you are truly an emissary from the capital and not a assassin? I do. Denier stands up. He kind of gestures his hands out. His fingers very long, pale, and they seem to have kind of like sharp fingernails at the end of them. Denier reaches into his cloak and he shows the letter with the royal seal on it. And you're to do what with this exactly? Me? Deliver it. That's it. To the capital. Indeed. To the Archmage. Indeed. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Assassins? No. We're just delivery boys. Sent on a suicide mission, it would seem. Well, we've almost been killed at least a dozen times so far. <laughs> almost ain't the same as the real thing. But... We did meet the Jester of Bordeaux. And he's just as lethal as the legends say that he is. We barely got out. He tried to bring down a mountain on us. Well, do you have any proof of this encounter? Because that I would love to see. Aside from my friend's stab wounds, not much. And I will admit, it would be very forth forthright of you to have uh, self-inflicted those, but... I won't put too much stock in that one way or the other. Okay. If they killed, if they killed the guy, why would we come back? That's what almost makes it like a, Mike's like a why the fuck would that why would the fuck would we do that? We brought the corpse back. In good faith. Fair enough. I have something that may help, sir. 
I would like your permission for something. And I'm asking permission to show you that I mean no ill will. I would like to use my prestidigitation charm to show you exactly what the Jester of Bordeaux looks like. Wait, what? Is that how prestidigitation can work? Uh, minor, can... minor illusion would work that way. I thought it was a visual uh, visual figment. Uh, prestidigitation is more like wisps of smoke, sparks, things like that. You can create a non-magical trinket or an illusory image that can fit in your hand. I guess you can do like a small hologram. Like a like a crystal ball that has like a small image of them or what have Help you. me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. Something that so, fits in the palm of your hand. So I hold out my hand and it, inside of it, better yet, small trinket, right? I, Denier holds his hand. He casts press of digitation and a tiny doll. A tiny action figure of the Jester of Bordeaux appears, bowing like he did to us. He picks it up. And I'm supposed to believe this anymore, or why? How many people have seen exactly what he looks like? None. That's the point. Those who claim to have heard about him only hear about him in passing he doesn't leave witnesses maybe they do if one of them's the Connolly and Maswell just looks right at uh it's true personally I think he was testing us for some reason he did speak after all, he did speak to us. And what did he speak of, this jester? He said he's after the crystals as well. For what purpose, I'm not quite sure. But I can say that whatever legends the jester of Bordeaux may have behind him, a lot of the powers he displayed could have easily come from the crystals. I've seen these things do all manner of things. From a drop of blood causing a gout of fire to spread throughout an inn. Le leeching the blood dry from victims stabbed by a knife made from the crystals. To summoning a ten foot tall skeleton. Well... I have heard various reports of such things coming from the south. It is not for me to decide, but how do I know that you aren't causing this? You seem to be very, very forthright with this information, but all of these places that you've left behind, they seem to know terror in your wake. It's not untrue. But every place we've left, we've left for the better. Go to each of the towns that we've left in our wake and speak to the mayors of it. Don't think he's going to do that. They'll tell you just what kind of men we are. Mm. Well, except Amberglade. They might give you Asmo's criminal record, but... That's true. That is true. Kind of tilts his head. Amber... And I don't... <sighs> One sec. He actually reaches below his desk <clears throat> and pulls out, it seems to be a blue crystalline orb on a uh, little stand. This town with the ten-foot skeleton. Birchwood Creek, right? Yes, sir. He puts his clawed fingers to the orb. 
kind of swipes down. Seems to be making some symbols with his fingers. He starts speaking a uh, small enchantment. All of a sudden, there's a voice on the other end. Oh, oh! Yes, um, I'd like to speak with the mayor. Uh, hello, please send help! Send help! There. Where did you hello? just contact? That, that should have been Birchwood. Hello! That sounded like... What was his name again? The Gravekeeper. Barnes. You hear another voice on the other end. Uh, hi. Who's there? Um, this is Victor. Uh, the v Victor Blackthorn of Steamy Springs. Who am I speaking to? Uh, can't say. What, what do you mean you can't say? I can't say. Oh, no. What are you doing there? Oh, I know uh, who this I, I is. Just ha I just have a bit of a job to do. Sorry, I... Steamy do Springs, know... you said? Do we know that voice? Yeah, that's... That's that's the oh. guy we fought, the drow. Oh, hey. Oh, I know you guys. Yeah, we killed your skeleton. How are you alive? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I uh, can't say. Um... Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> Get the <laughs> fuck out of that town, or I will come back and throttle you. Oh, uh, it's okay. I'm basically done here. Um, how are you? What did you do? Uh, my job. We gotta oh. go. I'm gonna fucking kill this guy. I, I mean, okay. Uh, see you later, I guess. Just veins popping in his forehead. <laughs> when we find you again, we're going to do the same thing we did to you, your pets, and your minions. And we're going to make it a whole lot worse. I, I don't have any pets, but... Uh, what was your name? Hey, by the way, what was your name real fast? I uh, can't say. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Ah. I'm positive. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure, but it, it's better to be on the safe side, I guess. Oh. Well, like, we need to refer to you somehow, you know, when we describe the coffin we're going to get for you. Uh, fair enough. Um, yeah, just call me you. You? Okay. Yeah. No Thanks. Worries. Sure. No worries. Uh, so how, how are you guys? Oh, or, uh... Yeah, I know, Ralph, we're with the police right now. Oh, oh you know, just uh, uh, killing the servants of the Bleeding God, you know. Oh, cool, cool, cool. A uh, quick question. Can you just confirm something real fast for us? Because clearly you're working on something. Uh-huh, well, that, we've, we're we, done. This is my well, free time now. We, 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 fought, we fought and defeated you uh, a few weeks back, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 if, if I recall, I, I cut my own throat. But yeah, yeah, it wasn't looking great. Aswa just looks at <laughs> the police officers like, see? Yeah, I just look up at Vincent. You see the kind of shit we deal yeah, with. Yeah, he's just kind of like looking around, kind of like, what the fuck is happening? I open, I reach into my book, I reach into my bag. I open up, I grab my journal, flip it over to the encounter at, uh, at, uh, Birchwood. And I put it down on the desk in front of him. Yeah, I'd, I'd also take my book of lore and I'd flip it open to the section where I drew up the skeleton. Well, like, here's a good question, actually. Uh, if you could stay on the line real fast with me, appreciate it. It's good chatting with you again. Uh, good uh, to you too. I don't get a chance to do this very often. Yeah, no, weird. Uh, just a quick question. Like, why Why are you back, though? Like, uh, what's up? I, I can't say. Just the job. Oh, I know you can't. I know you, I know you can't. The job, clearly, but, like... You usually can't come back from death. But the North is kind of wild like that. Yeah. 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 Is there anybody still alive in that town? No. Jesus Christ.
I mean, me, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're going to rectify We're going to fix wrong. that. Uh, I, I'm leaving, so no, there won't be anybody. Don't Where are you going? Person. Can't say. Uh, I suggest Steamy Springs. I don't think that's on my itinerary. I swing by here. Is it nice? Yeah. Oh, it's real nice. nice. It's going to look even better when we paint the place red with your guts. And the I'll put that on the maybe pile. All right, well, I, I should probably get going, I guess. Um, nice talking to you, though. Bye. Bye? I, I don't know how to hang this thing up. Is it on your end? Go away! Okay, I'll, I'll just leave. You just hear footsteps walking off. You hear a... <laughs> as a door kind of opens and... <laughs> Wolfgang is just sort of rubbing his temples. Like, he's disintegrated, right? Like, that, I distinctly remember that happening. He fell into a puddle full of milk. It's true, and the milk turned pink because of all the blood. But we pulled his corpse out because I was looting it, right? Okay, what the fuck? Throat. Okay, hey, 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 we're trying to figure this shit out, too. Sorry. Yeah, we're just okay, as confused I, as you We're just as confused as you are. We killed that guy. Okay, I don't know. I don't know where to begin the paperwork on this one, so... I think you better fucking dispatch people to Birchwood Creek, because apparently he's claimed that he fucking killed the entire fucking town. Well, yes. Um, I I will send message out, obviously. To who? Uh, to, to fucking who? They're all I fucking dead. I don't know. Cold apparently. Reach is the only town between here and there. Oh, God, why don't you give them a call? A Christ minute. almighty. At least, no. a war at least a warning. As far as we know, he's still in he's still in Birchwood Creek. Oh, we warn Cold Reach. We can get them, tell them to leave something is this connected to this oh yes bleeding god that you are referring to yes and i am surprised you haven't heard about it i have heard about people running around claiming to be his acolytes and we ran a couple people out of town the other day who were elves one was a half elf one was I don't know what. This That's man not... appeared to be... Well, the man you found appeared to be associated with them, and we really wanted him for questioning, but... <sighs> Was one of them a bard? Really pompous? All I have are their descriptions. One was very tall. Seemed to be a half-elf. Okay. Another one seemed to be... about as tall as you or I. But he seemed to have knives on his fingers. What? I'm going to try to organize something to go help the people of... If they're still there. I know that this all started off very rocky, but let's say I believe you. Okay. He reaches into his desk and he starts writing furiously on a uh, embroidered piece of paper. Takes out an envelope, slides it in there, drips some wax from a red candle that was burning at his desk and presses it with a f seal this is against all of my best judgment but right now you guys seem to be on the level take this to the town of ice forge it's at the end of the valley and it acts as the last step on your way to the frozen lake of Mitternacht. Present this to my brother. He's the Duke of Ice Forge. Also a vampire. This guy's a vampire. Oh wait, what? What? Yeah, he's a vampire. Don't worry about it. Yes, my brother is also a vampire. What? Don't worry about it. <clears throat> That's what just puts his hand behind it, hands on his head, like what? Look, the fuck? 
you're a snake. He's a vampire. People can. Yeah, since I was born this way, that that like happens. I mean, let's I'm, not get. I'm in. I'm a pure blood, so you know. What? You're... Yeah, let's not let's not get into the anatomy of vampires. As well, I'll tell you another time. Not all vampires are. Like, thank you. Not all vampires. <laughs> you're one of the good ones, Connolly. So are you. Just kinda, anyway, just kind of nods. So <clears throat> we take this here, brother. What's he's the Duke? What's his name? <clears throat> My brother. Uh, his name's Darius. Darius, Darius. Blackthorn. All right. Well, I'll probably want to head there right away. Get word out to Cold Reach. And Do you think that they might be in danger as well. I believe so. If I don't know what exactly this man, this you, as he wanted us to call him, was trying to do. We thwarted it once, but somehow he came back to life. He slit his own throat right before us. I filled him with holy energy and nothing. He's... This, you said you met this man. Can you describe him for me? Uh, drow. 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 Really oh, my God. His body disintegrated upon death. Except for his skeleton. If what you are describing is true, I would proceed very carefully. Why? The drow serve a powerful force. And they're very, very devout. Can you say what it is? No, because nobody's dumb enough to ask. Well, well let's not break that streak now, shall we? If it happens to be this bleeding god, then I would... I would be very careful. You may leave. I have some calls to make. He calls downstairs. Somebody brew up some coffee! It's gonna be a late day. We'll leave you to, the, to your work. As you step back out into town, it's already dusk. It's dark. Ugh. How the fuck long were we in there? Maybe half an hour, maybe an hour. Well, that went well. Next time, why don't you tell him exactly where we live in the name of your child? Asmo says to f fucking <laughs> Wolfgang. As you guys are conversing, a strange bird cuts through the fog and lands on a post in front of you. Seems to be obsidian black, made almost of glass. And it stares at you, Wolfgang, and cocks its head. And here's what we'll take a break. Its mouth kind of in like a 180 degree arc. Ah! Hey, cousin. You hear Miguel's voice coming out of it. Ah! Mi Miguel. I can't hear you on the other side of this, but I thought I'd leave you a message. This is, uh, mm. one of my trinkets that dad left me. If you ever need to get a message to me, feel free to drop a little note in this thing's pouch right there and, uh, shoot it off. It should know where to find me. I hope you don't mind, but I... Took a few strands of your hair so that I could find you. I just figured, uh, you know, staying in touch would be good through all this. 
Anyway, I haven't really gotten a good uh, handle on what happened to Magnus, but if I find anything, I'll, I'll find a way to let you know, and I assume you'll do the same for me. See you around, cuz. And the bird's mouth pops shut. Its head cocks to the side. And it kind of like hovers down and lands, uh, it like lands, tries to perch on your arm if you hold it up. You gonna warn him? About you? And as yeah. the, yeah, as the bird lands on your arm, it shrinks down into a much smaller version of this. Like, it could probably fit in your pocket right now. It's about the size of, it's about the size of your blink rock, but it's still the shape of that bird. Hmm. I've been thinking. Yeah. Asma, when he hits you with that sword and you fell to the ground laughing, what did it feel like? What did it feel like, Nick? Uh, your stomach, your, uh, your stomach was just convulsing. Like you, you couldn't stop your diaphragm from making you laugh. You I couldn't. Stop it it did not feel funny. It was like you were having a laughing fit that you just could not stop. It, like, it wasn't like that when it was funny. It was like an attack of laughter, and I couldn't hold air in my lungs. Like when you laugh, they, all the air comes out of your lungs really quickly. And that's that's the feeling of laughter. That's why you get lightheaded when you laugh, right? But that when he stabbed me, it just it kept going nonstop, endlessly. Now. I want you to think for a moment. Back in Cold Reach, we found Magnus. There was obviously a scuffle. He had a puncture wound in his chest. He had a grotesque smile on his face. That's what I was thinking, too. And Miguel says that he had red cloth. The jester killed Magnus. I didn't realize at the time. I thought about it last night. The bastard killed my cousin. And I'll bet you anything it's that gem that causes the effect of it. I was thinking the same thing. Well... While we're traveling, I'll probably write up a note and send this thing out. I'll double my efforts on my spell, on my communication spell. Especially Thank if we need to warn the others. Thank you. I'd also like to talk to Jermont. And the way things are turning out, this is far more serious than I imagined. In your turns, Asma. What about you? Wolfgang has somebody he wants to get in contact with, and I'm working on a spell that'll let us communicate with folks. Do you have anybody that you're that you want to send messages to or get in contact with? No. Fair enough. Is there anything that you guys like to do in Steamy Springs before you try to find your way out of here? I want to go to the weasel, and I want to tell Tom the story of the Jester, Jester of Bordeaux. Anybody else? Uh, that's one would also like to. Just go to the weasel and get a drink. Yeah, you still have basically one night at the uh, spa left, too, if you wanted to stay there. Oh, shit. Yo, Asmo's going to go to that spa again. He deserves it. Today's been rough. It's been a rough day for Esmo. Wolfgang's gonna go to the Weasel, get a few drinks, and start writing up a note for Miguel. All right, you guys head back up the stairs. You get that same beautiful view as you're stepping over the side of the mountain. Fog gets thinner and thizzer, thinner as you get up. And then you find yourself in front of the nice, warm, glowing spa, and over to the side you find the wandering weasel. 
See you guys in a bit. Naswell goes up towards the spa. Take care of yourself, man. Naswell just kind of does a salute over the shoulder salute thing at a uh, dinner. Dinner. Naswell, you go upstairs. You set any of the stuff that you don't want to bring with you aside in your room. I uh, get in there, but am I able to bring a knife into the spa? Yeah, you can you can tuck one in your towel if you want it. Asmo tucks uh, the uh, fire ant in there. About to say he tucks, huh? Yeah, yeah. buddy. You get in there and you just kind of relax or try to get your mind off things. The water is very soothing, mm. but there doesn't do much to soothe your mind. That's something you have to do yourself. And Asmo just uh, tries to rest. Take that moment. All right. Wolfgang, Denier, you walk over to the side of the spa, and you pop open those doors, and you look up, and there's Tom standing by the door, or by the bar. Hello, and welcome to the Wandering Weasel. Ah, you're back. Hello again. Is your, uh, is your friend okay? He's uh, not with you this time. You look, well, uh, you look different. Well, I, he f has a hard time dealing with uh, this line of work. Hmm. Well, everybody has an adjustment and everybody has their way in life, I suppose. So what can I get you? Denier walks over, he creates the figure, and he sets the figure down on the bar in front of Tom. Ooh, fancy little doodad you got there. We met him. Seems nice. <laughs> the Jester of Bordeaux. Hmm. He killed my cousin. I guess he's a prick then. Right. Prick indeed. We've got a story for you if you've got a drink for us. Let's see what this story let's see what the story's worth. Denier will go into detail telling the story of how they left the bar. How they found the the woman running in, pleading for help. How they all rushed to the aid of the woman to find the man dead. To find the halfling being skewered by the jester of Bordeaux. About halfway through this story, he hands each of you a drink of your choice. And then Denier goes on and he talks about the battle that ensued. Asmo growing multiple times his normal size. The cracking of shatter across the battlefield and how the jester seemed to pop in and out of mist almost like he was made of mist itself he speaks of he speaks of Wolfgang pointing at the creature at the jester and the jester locking eyes with Wolfgang then quite he cinematic then he speaks of how in one fell swoop Wolfgang raised his weapon and struck true, dealing a devastating blow to the jester. Hmm. And, of course, um, wh where he can, he'll use prestidigitation along with his, uh, with his tail to liven it up a little bit. You see uh, Pip in some pajamas actually staring out from the corner. Hmm. We got the better of the jester of Bordeaux. He left alive. We left alive. But we put a crack in that porcelain mask of his. Well. Everything I've heard of this fellow has been hearsay so far. I was about to make my way down to Bordeaux myself just to take in the rumors. Now I'm all the more excited. Meanwhile, Pip is just like, Oh, you'll be fine. Probably. Glance over to Pip. You've got Lush by your side. Mm. 
As long as she's by your side, you have nothing to fear. He looks over to Lush, who's got her head down on the bar, drink kind of toppled over at her side. <laughs> when she's conscious. <laughs> and unless Wolfgang has any business, uh, Daenerys is basically going to tell Tom of their side of the story from Cold Reach, from Birchwood. But he's also going to give uh, Tom a heads up about what's going on in Birchwood. Hmm. Well, that sounds horrific. Suppose we won't be stopping down that way on our way then. Hmm. Shame. Guess we'll make our way around the. Well, it allows us to see a few different towns if we go around the other way towards Bodo, towards the lake. Yeah, we're probably tomorrow we're going to be heading out, heading further north. What about you? Well, we'll probably be, probably be taking down shop here in the next couple of days. Business has been good, but it's slowing down a little bit as, uh, funny enough, as you enter town. Go figure. Hmm. Fun and excitement always goes where we go. And business seems to dry up. Good on you. Mm. Well, I'm sorry if we're drying up your business. Oh, it's but fine. Perhaps it's just the season. Maybe. We did learn something rather interesting. Hmm. The owners of the hot springs, they speak highly of you. Oh, well. I believe I helped them out some years ago. How yes, long ago they... was that? They spoke uh, about you blessing their hot springs. Yes, yes, it was uh, uh, mutually beneficial. I got to set up shop in a nice place. I got to use their facilities. Oh, feels good to warm the bones on a hot day. Or a cold day. Whatever it is outside. Indeed. <laughs> so... How have Pip and Abigail been taken to the Wandering Weasel? Well, oh, Pip's taken on just fine. As you've seen, he can mix quite the drink far better than I can, little rascal. Very eh, kind of shrugs. You should be going to bed. <laughs> Don't give me that. It's late, and you need to work the shift that more people are in here. <laughs> kind of scoots his feet upstairs. He's in kind of like a onesie sp a onesie. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Abigail, well, he kind of points back to the piano. She seems to have quite a bit of talent. She's playing back there right now. Well, she, picked that, she picked up the song of the Wandering Weasel in no time. That's good to hear. They're a couple of good kids. They are. Although, I wouldn't take Pip back to uh, Silver Rock. He seems rather against going there, so you might want to keep that in mind if you head back down there in the future. Well, I will keep that in mind indeed. Anything else I can do for you gentlemen tonight? Uh, Wolfgang, I imagine you've just been sitting at the bar drinking and writing throughout all this. Yeah, just writing a later to Miguel, basically, basically just letting him know what we saw, what we know, what happened in Birchwood Creek. Basically telling him to avoid that area if all possible. Alright. Uh, yeah, just saying we're in uh, we're in Steamy Springs at the moment. Stuff like that. Hope he's doing well. Yeah, you seem to finish up that about the time that Denier and Wolfgang are at this set of the conversation. Seem to be going through a lot lately. Well, found out I had cousins, and then within the week, one of them died. I haven't seen my baby boy in months. And 
snake man with us screams and squirms at every little thing that walks by his way. I know he's just a common. He's he's a few drinks in at the moment. I know he's just a common thief, but it's nice to have him around when he's not pissing his pants. Hmm. Never quite struck me as a thief. Interesting. <sighs> sort of cast prestidigitation and uh, conjures up an image of uh, Elliot. Sort of looks at it. Your boy? Mm-hmm. Mm. Elliot. I haven't seen my children in some time either. Must seem pretty high stakes compared to mine. Oh no. Fatherhood is as fatherhood is. Full of its own challenges. You just, just want wanna... them to do the best for themselves. I want to give them that opportunity. That's why I'm out here, you know, farting evil. At the same time... I want to be there to see him grow up. That's full of its own challenges, too. Who knows, maybe you'll find monster hunting preferable. Well, hopefully I can make it so that he has that choice. Hard to see, but do what you can, and perhaps you can make it a reality. Not the Hopefully. drink? Please. Pulls up the whiskey, just kind of pours it off, uh, tops you off. Throws it back. Not drinking too much tonight. Business, I imagine. Like you wouldn't believe. I'd believe a lot. What do you know about the drow? Mm, the drow. The fairest little batch they are. Very stingy with the tips. And that's if and when they can get away. Know anything about what they worship? Hmm. A little. Not a lot, though. Anything you give us would probably help. Well, if I were to register, I guess I'd say a god. I'd say they know this god personally. You mean they've got the direct relationship with their god? I believe so. Hard to say whether it is a major or a lesser god, but... Perhaps even a demigod. Hard to say. They are very tight-lifted on the whole subject, no matter how many drinks I offer them. One almost did. One almost told me. And then another one just walked up and slit his throat. Oh, oh, oh. oh Lush, Lush put her fist through his face. It was a very, it was a very awkward night. We had to leave. I imagine so. Yes. Hmm. Quick little devils they are, though. Like Lush normally catches things before that happens, and whew, just happened so quickly. So it's not that they're enchanted. It's that they just really don't like talking about it. No, no it doesn't seem that no. way. They seem very, very devout. Hmm. Uh, leading God servants often like to boast about how they serve the Lady God. I think this might be an entirely different entity. He's just sort of mumbling to himself about his own theories. 
Hard to say. If these do happen to be connected, it's quite possibly just a difference of race. Maybe. Who knows? All I know is that somehow we let Birchwood Creek get destroyed. He actually drops the smile from his face. You couldn't have stopped that. There's nothing you could have done there. You can sit here and blame yourself all night, try to find the answers at the bottom of... Pours you another glass. The glass. But... In the end, that was something you had no control over. You can't be everywhere at once. Even I can't be everywhere at once. And I can be anywhere I want to be. That's true. But what if I could? He starts... Gets a sort of a curious look on his face. Dangerous thoughts? A little bit more mundane than you might be thinking. <laughs> Mysterious. I like it. I look forward to seeing the results. I'll let you know how it goes. I'm sure you will. Something tells me... Something tells me that our meeting was not... Coincidence. There's something at play. Yeah. Something tells me that, too. Wonderful. He's back to his old smiling self. Denier! Denier, come look at my son. The second time that Wolfgang calls, it seems to snap Denier almost out of a stupor. He was just miles away. Huh? Come look at my son. He leans over, and he looks at the hologram. He just, just got a hologram of his son just chewing on something. Look at that. He's got my eyes, and he's got his mother's hair. He's just... damn lucky to have you. <laughs> sure is. Fucking badass. You see me almost just blow a hole through that guy's chest? Yeah, I did. That was crazy. That was amazing. Yep. I can be pretty amazing when I want to be. Think of how think of how amazing you're gonna be once you get back into the saddle. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not already in the saddle? We can all grow. We've all still got room. That's true, I'm kinda rusty. Investigation was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. You know what? Tell you what. Hmm. When we go back to the room, how about you come over to my room? I'll show you... I'll show you a little something that Lex gave me back in... Back home. You're not smoking that pipe weed, are you? What? It's rock. really good to take the stress off. And it'll rot your brain. That's both true and not true. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> we'll see. We got traveling to do this tomorrow. Denier. Denier yes. goes through and he pulls up a, a little hologram himself. He leans over and he shows Wolfgang. It is a very squat, uh, very t very tiny, about four foot, maybe four or five, tabaxi. Uh, rather well dressed, uh, very finely dressed. But he's got this, the biggest smile and the most joyous eyes. And Denier just gives a little bit of a smile. Well, don't tell me you're a father too. 
No. That's my father. A little short. Yeah. Hmm. How long has it been since you've seen him? Seven years. Shit. Disappeared when I was ten. I always told the funniest stories, too. But... Listening to you talking about Elliot, listening to Tom talking about his kids, made me think about him a little bit. Made me miss him. I hope you get to meet him one day. I think he'd like you. <sighs> he'd definitely like your coin purse. I'll be sure to keep that away from him then. <laughs> You guys share a laugh and you finish off your drinks and eventually you leave the wandering weasel unless there was anything you wanted to converse with Tom about a bit more. No, I'm good. I think we're good. Yeah, Asmo, at about the same time that they're getting out, you've kind of wandered back into the lobby after soaking in the pool. Your wounds, like you're back to full health. Everything seems to be fine with you. You don't even seem to have any of the wounds that you had from this night. <sighs> you even managed to slip out of your old skin while you were in there. <laughs> I so molt when no one's shiny, looking. You got shiny new scales. Asma's just holding up his molten skin. Do you have a garbage can for this? The uh, <laughs> innkeeper's like, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, would, I honestly would suggest burning it. Just kind of points you to like a bin over on the side. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of it for you. Okie dokie. Stomps it in. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you guys enter as Asmo's doing that. You guys get all sauced up. Not as much as you'd think. But we told a fair number of stories. We got uh, maybe a story or two in return. Hmm. Hang on. <clears throat> Before I forget. Oh jeez. Yeah, and I guess, uh, one, I guess one of you got I guess one of you got ripped pretty good. Uh, he takes uh he takes the um the the obsidian, the, uh, the obsidian crow and, and yeah, attaches he, the letter to it. Yeah, you hold out your hand and <laughs> it just kind of pops up and perches. It's kind of the it, it kind of looks like a hawk. And you slide the message into like the little tube on its leg and clasp it shut just kind of cocks its head and looks at you go my sweet obsidian baby and don't get eaten by a wolf ah! she you hear kind of like this scraping like almost uh chimey noise as it flies into the sky Ugh. Well, that's taken care of. <sighs> oh, where to next? Get a night's sleep and head out tomorrow morning to the next horrible place where something horrible happens to us. Yep. Yeah, probably. Oh my, oh my god. He said that we're almost at uh, Meter Knox. That means this will all be over soon once we figure out what's going on there. We have to swing by that one place first, right? That's true. But that's probably for the best. Don't want uh, all these people getting caught off guard when you-know-who comes knocking at their door, throat all unslit. You think it's because he was a drow? You know, the more I think about it, I don't think they're related. Hmm. I think they're just using the crystals as sort of a means to serve their own ends. Could be wrong, though. Mm. Yeah. yeah well. well, think of it like this. You've got the head of one of them in your backpack. If it regrows flesh, we'll know what's up. You got a drow's head in your bag? No, you got... You have Clara's head. 
Oh. Uh, I reach into my bag and I pull out Clara's skull. I uh, once we're in the once we're in our own room. All right, I was gonna say if you're having this conversation in the lobby, the uh, the uh, innkeeper is just doing his best to look straight ahead and pretend not to be listening, but his eyes were wide. I, I figured though we were walking and talking because he sent the bird away. Yeah, you would have stepped out back onto the uh, terrace to send off the bird. Oh, um, and then you would have stepped bird. back into the lobby. <laughs> yeah. Don't mind the bird made of jewels. He says to the <laughs> the innkeeper. Uh, I, I won't. Seems like a younger man than the one you saw yesterday. Good. Uh-huh. Yeah, have a good night. Just kind of wiping down the counter despite the fact that it's already polished. <laughs> You guys head upstairs. Is there anything you wanted to commune about before getting to bed and getting ready to go in the morning or later in the night? I don't know. It depends on what time you think it is. All right. I'm going to, Asma just goes right to bed. I'm going to take a quick look at that skull in my bag just to, just to make sure. <laughs> As you examine it, it doesn't appear to have regrown anything, but still haunts you the fact that this thing is new. In all your years, you've never come across a new monster. Its fanged teeth are almost like that of a vampire's, but they aren't hooked in the same way. They seem almost serrated, as if to do as much damage as possible. The horns appear to be made of the same material as the bone, but they're black. Everything else looks very feminine, human. Just these extra pieces, they keep drawing you back. Like, what what caused this? I mean, obviously it had something to do with the crystals, but what is it? You ponder this until you fall asleep. Sort of, sort of, uh, I, I form a finger gun. I stick it to the skull's head. Not so scary now, are ya? Bang. And then you kind of like lean back and just fall asleep in the chair. <laughs> Denier's going to write in his journal a little bit about their adventure uh, fighting the Jester of Bordeaux. He's going uh, he's gonna to spend a little bit reading on the Archmage Harbinger of the Land, and then he's going to go to bed. All right. Give me a, uh investigation check as you're reading the book. Okay. 21. Nice. That'll help you with your intelligence checks when it comes to, you know, history and stuff here. Uh, little tidbit you pick up. The Archmage is not a living person. Okay. Seems to be... Uh, they Like, the book seems to describe him uh, autobiographically as a masterpiece. So either a lich or a construct... You're unsure. Okay, good deal. Then Denier's going to go to bed. All right, you close your book up, you snuff out the lantern, and the moon glows through your window as fog wisps across it. It's a nice soothing visual as you fall asleep in this nice comfy bed. You wake up in the morning, you check out, you hand the keys back to the uh, old lady who's now in the front. Thank you for stopping by. Be sure to tell your friends. Denier lifts the, the book. He smiles a little bit. I'm writing in, I'm writing about everything that's going on here in the city. Wonderful. Don't forget to tell them how pretty I am. <laughs> she kind of giggles. <gasps> that's going to be the rolling first thing that I do. <laughs> then you give us uh, a little bit of a smile as he puts the bag, the book away. You guys make your way down, down back to the town. You still see the carriages sitting over there. Beauregard is actually petting his horse. 
Oh, good morning, sirs. Good morning, Beauregard. You uh, have a good night's sleep last night? Oh, I don't slumber. Those days are long behind me. Makes sense. <laughs> yes. It does, when you think about it. I think we're heading out today. Ship it out, at least. Ah, wonderful. Uh, are you heading up north further still? Believe so. We'll be given, well, a, be given an extra job along the way. Surprise, surprise. Well, the next stop between here and the capital would be Ice Forge. Asmo snaps his fingers and points. That's it. That's where we're heading. Oh, I miss being able to do that. He tries to snap, but his thumb flies through his fingers. <laughs> cool. Uh, can we acquire your services today? Oh, of course, sir. I was contracted to bring you all the way back up north. Ah, uh, well. Just hop in, boys. <sighs> Wonderful. All aboard the Beauregard Express. It's what I'm calling it. Do you think it has a good ring to it? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. I like Osmo. it. Osmo gets in. Dinier gets in. And he uh, pulls out the book. He holds open the door for you, Wolfgang. Good morning, Mr. White. Good morning, Blue Regard. I hope you had a pleasant stay. Slept like a baby. Wonderful. Very drunk, baby. Oh, that's how I lost my brother. Anyway, onwards right. we go. Uh, just adding that to the list of questions to ask Beauregard when we get a chance. That's not. <laughs> and the uh, ghost horse-drawn carriage begins to make its way out of Steamy Springs. You enter the misty valley that you traveled yesterday. And we will pick up in the town of Iceforge next time on Roll With Me.